you can't get much more substantial or good for you in terms of vegetables than 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 uh, an old classic. And in this instance, we're returning to Stonehenge. Um, Stonehenge in recent years has had a tremendous uh, drama surrounding it uh, with increasing intensity to do with the the uh, road network solution. There is a problem with the road nearby in terms of carrying capacity and people have been wanting to uh, also use this as an, as an opportunity to move the road potentially, potentially underground so as to, uh, in, in quotation marks, restore the historic landscape. Uh, and, uh, and, and well, um, there's been various proposals, most recently a long tunnel and a short tunnel, and uh, well, what's happened? Well, a few weeks ago, Highways England, which is the UK government's road building body, um, announced that it uh, had a preferred solution for the A303 at Stonehenge, mm -hmm. which is part of a larger A303 upgrade programme, because it's the main trunk road to the west of England. And they have decided to go against the opinion of a lot of independent archaeologists and a very vociferous uh, campaign opposing this particular solution. And they've opted to build a 2.9 kilometre long so-called short tunnel, which will take the road away from the immediate uh, area of the Stonehenge stones, which people will be familiar with. But that also entails building a dual carriageway with the attendant infrastructure, including lighting and so on across a large chunk of the Stonehenge World Heritage Landscape because uh, the um, Stonehenge site is now understood and, and conserved really and regarded by archaeologists as a complete landscape, not just those stones which are obviously iconic but uh, are only part of the story. Hmm. And, and, well, and, and I think, so, 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 okay, so, so, so an, a, a preference has been stated uh, and this comes in the context of something that we, that we previously talked about where uh, UNESCO were more or less threatening English heritage um, in terms of uh, the, the status, uh, uh, you know, maintaining the UNESCO World Heritage Site status of, of the site. Um, they're basically saying if you, if you ruin Stonehenge, as far as we're concerned, this, this status will be taken away from you. So an awful lot of, you know, the stakes are high. Um, but also recently, I, I've, uh, for example, a couple of, uh, couple of days ago now, um, uh, like when they so about a week ago, the, uh, there was a, a, a comment in the, the Times newspaper, a friend of mine saved a cutting for me, actually it was on the 17th of September, uh, where um, Mike Pitts of uh, British Archaeology, the editor in fact, was, was arguing that this could be great for archaeology, that, that uh, in fact there is a drama here uh, that's a storm in a teacup, and that, um, well, uh, all archaeology is both destructive and creative, and in the case of this uh, tunnel, it's actually an opportunity to to learn more about Stonehenge. Now, what what's your, what what's your view in terms of the the ethics? Because I mean that that to me that's a very raw data gathering mindset. That's a, almost like you know Stonehenge has to be put through a factory of some sort in order to glean more information. Um, what what do you think? It's a very interesting comment, and I think it points up a real difficulty that the archaeological sector has with this particular issue. Mm. Uh, it is undoubtedly true because it is a planning requirement under UK law that archaeology is done in advance of any project that requires planning permission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that undoubtedly adds to the sum of knowledge. The problem at Stonehenge is that as many people who oppose the so-called short tunnel option would argue it's not just about a local transport problem that the UK government has with the A303. Mm. Stonehenge is actually a world heritage landscape which means that a United Nations body has designated it of having a um, unique universal value to all humankind. It's not just um, something that the Brits can deal with as they like. Mm -hmm. And the UK government has signed up to this. It's a, it, you know, it's a member of UNESCO. Um, it's already facing criticism uh, for another UNESCO World Heritage Site in Liverpool, which, again, local planning decisions, it is argued, have devalued the, uh, the, the World Heritage Landscape on Liverpool waterfront. And um, that is under threat of losing its World Heritage status too. Uh, and it has certainly been argued 
in various blogs and um, or in, in social media that for the UK government to go against uh, a UNESCO report and, and, a, and a report that was adopted by the most recent uh, UNESCO committee meeting which oversees World Heritage Sites um, to, to go against the advice of that report which is not to build the short tunnel but to look at other options including a longer tunnel and a, a bypass around the south of the World Heritage Site which weren't on the table for the la during the last consultation that Highways England ran um, to, to ignore UNESCO's point of view is to set an absolutely appalling example to other governments who might be uh, in charge of, of other World Heritage Sites, World Heritage Landscapes. Okay, um, well would, would you permit me to be a little bit devil's advocate here? Um, That's what this is about. Yeah, and in, well, in so much as I, I can't, you know, I, I, I get it and I'm all, obviously I'm on board as far as that's concerned and, and, uh, and you know and, and uh, it has been argued by some um, that actually, the, the, in this instance, the ethical thing is to, is as it were, to walk away. Is this, I agree. Yeah, and, and so, so you have you have this stance whereby some archaeologists are saying, well, if, it, if the archaeology can't be done properly, then then we will not call it archaeology, as it were. Um, but uh, but also as well, I mean, you know, this whole idea of that Britain is a um, a standard bearer. That somehow we should be concerned about how we behave, so so that so as to lead other people to the historic, as it were, and heritage management light. Um, from the standpoint of devil's advocate, is it not possible that maybe a, a very a brutally pragmatic relationship with archaeology is something that maybe we've earned? In so much as across across this country, we've got so many heritage sites, so much high. A profile archaeology and history that potentially here and there actually it's okay to to let some of it be compromised. You can argue that I would disagree though because I think you know, world heritage status it's not a universal it, it is there for sites which are seen to have a universal um, a, a universal value in and of them, themselves I mean another example in the UK is Hadrian's Wall hmm. uh, obviously uh, and you live obviously almost on top of it, um, and live with it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You live with it every day, um, and, and and that you know, and that shows obviously world heritage sites, like any other archaeological site, have to exist in a modern world where people live and work and do agriculture and do industry and go on holiday and all those other things, and all those things are involved in their management and conservation. Mm. I think the argument with Stonehenge is that first of all, it's a an international icon. You only have to think of the Stonehenge scene in Spinal Tap. Yeah. Which is obviously an American film, mm -hmm. but people would immediately get that and what it's about and mm -hmm. why it's funny. Um, there yeah, except, aren't any except, except sites you nobody knows them. what they're up to or what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, 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 and you know, any archaeologist would want to know more about what they were up to and what they were doing around yeah. there. But and, and I think that one of the other points is that about this and why it's become so controversial um, is that. Because of the work that's been done at Black Patch and, 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 and other sites work by people like Mark Parker Pearson and so on, we are already know a huge amount more about that landscape and how com complex it is and how sensitive it is and how it developed over um, about eight millennia before current era. Mm. So you know, we, we, it, it, it's, it's become even more clear why it deserves that world heritage status. Initially prompted by the fact that it has that iconic very visible monument sat on top of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, but well, so go. No, no. I was just to say because it, it. I mean, the reason why I was sort of pushing the, the devil's advocate aside was because increasingly this this is a focus of uh, this is a problem that's coming into focus in various strands of archaeology. The the way in which we ban, ban, um, uh, manage, sorry, various interest groups. The way in which we um, uh, try and sort of integrate the concerns of, uh, in some cases, natural, uh, the natural landscape, in some cases the farming landscape, in some cases the, the infrastructure in terms of roads and this kind of thing. And there is something that, that Mike actually says at the end of his, his, of his, um, his uh, uh, letter uh, in the Times that's interesting. He says, in, in years ahead it is vital that all organisations work together for the benefit of Stonehenge and the public. Uh, and, and again, I think, I think that's kind of it's a strange sort of turnaround there because actually he comes back to once again focusing on on 
on the benefit of the monument as opposed to landscape. So it's making an argument for landscape use, but then turning it back onto the monument. And I, I suppose what what I'm intrigued by is the question as to whether or not actually um, uh, heritage comes to a point and historical monuments come to a point where actually uh, they are they can sometimes and sometimes have to be secondary. Um, a, a good example actually would be on would be on my doorstep. For example, if people if people hadn't physically knocked down portions of Adrian's wall, yeah. um, you know uh, the, the 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 shipping industry, uh, the, the 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 industrial powerhouse of so much of the world for a long time wouldn't have really got going. Uh, and and no one you know now we have urban ar urban archaeology and then industrial archaeology because of that. And I suppose I'm just I'm just intrigued by this balance. I mean, I, I, obviously, in the case of Stonehenge, I, I imagine we, you know, again, I, I'm very much I totally agree, <laughs> as it were, with you. But I think I think there is there is this is an excellent case study of at, at the very least for hinting at the conversation that possibly has to happen. I think you're absolutely right, and 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 certainly I think the conversation has to happen. I, th I think another thing that has to be factored in here, and it's certainly all all the research I've done on the subject in writing a number of articles now about it for Pipeline is that there is a suspicion, put it no stronger than that, on the part of some of the independent people and campaign groups that the industry and sector bodies that are meant to be, or, or people would think are, are looking after their interests and the interests of the landscape, are actually, uh, for political reasons probably, it would be argued, taking decisions that um, make the government's life easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, 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 that they've made a political calculation that they don't want to oppose this too much. Yeah, and I think that that's, that's, that's also something else which I think has been in the water for, for a little while now, isn't it? Is, yeah. is that, and not just Stonehenge. No, no, I mean, essentially across the board, ever since the, um, the Chancellor uh, a few years ago now, George Osborne, the, the, sorry, the editor of the Evening Standard, the Black Rock consultant, six days a year. Sorry, uh, the person who used to be this, arguably the second most powerful person in politics in Britain, um, made the changes to how it was that these bodies were funded, um, and uh, and that has well, certainly nat Natural England and Historic England had their remit changed so that they explicitly had to support what the government defined as sustainable development. Yes, exactly, and that that obviously compromises policy, and also especially when they're holding your purse strings quite exactly. so tightly. Um, okay, so so again, this 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 definitely this this is a marker, this is a pointer towards broader conversations, and also it's worthwhile just noting as well that, for example, I shared this cutting on the Archaeosuit Facebook page, and reaction is essentially appalled. People um, are generally speaking appalled that actually the, the people are even thinking about digging a tunnel near Stonehenge. Um, I think, um, as far as I can tell, I mean, basically there's two reactions here, but I've seen other people, they've commented, they've messaged. Um, it's interesting how this, this, what happens at Stonehenge will also have an impact on how people assume we are handling history generally in this country. Yeah. Exactly. So again, hence, hence this conversation, I guess. Yeah. Mm. I, th I think it's worth saying, just as we finish this segment as well, Mark, that uh, just because Highways England has announced it, the short tunnel as its preferred option doesn't mean that the tunnel borers are going to go in anytime soon. No. There still has to be an exhaustive planning process. They have to see, uh, it, it could even go to judicial review and public inquiry. So this isn't going to happen anytime soon. And whatever happens, I think it's going to be very closely argued um, over a number of years to come. Yeah, yeah, no, without a doubt, and and, and rightly so. You know, absolutely. absolutely.